Hi everyone, I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars and welcome back to my channel where we talk about frugal living, saving money, cutting expenses, and living our best life on less. I am the daughter of Depression era parents that were born in 1929 and 1931 and were raised during the Depression era. And I was raised very much the way that they were raised with a lot of those frugal traits built in that were just automatic and I still lean that way. So when you listen to my channel, you may hear some things that you don't hear on other channels because of my background. And I just wanted to put that out there up front. I do a lot of thinking and sometimes I will give you some of my ideas more to get you thinking about your own situation uh, because I don't know your situation. I don't know what will work for you. I know what works for me and what I'm willing to do to make ends meet. But sometimes we all don't fit in those neat little boxes. So today we're going to talk about dreaming within our means. Actually, one of um, my subscribers made a comment about that. And I thought it was such an important way of looking at things that I wanted to address that today. Living within our means is one thing. Dreaming within our means puts another layer in there that I think takes it just a step farther that we can explore that today and see what that looks like and see if maybe our dreaming is what's causing us to not be able to live out our budget and live out our life within our means. So living within our means, let's break that down today. Living within our means just generally means not spending more than we bring in, not having expenses that are more than what we actually have as an income every single month. But when you break that down in your budget, if you have one, Let's look at those different components to see if we are dreaming beyond our means and that's what's causing us to struggle. We have to not only live within our means, but each of those categories, we have to live within our means of our budget. For instance, are we eating within our means? Are we thinking that we need to have fancier foods than we can really afford, more expensive foods or brands than what we can afford. I'm down here in a retirement community right now, living out my dreams, which is to spend my winter in a warmer climate. And I have found that a lot of my neighbors around here will eat out almost every single day. And that's fine if they have a lot of investments, if they have a lot of money, if they have a lot of interest or different things coming in all the time that has made that possible, then they're living within their means. But for me, I can't live that lifestyle. If I tried to live that lifestyle and went out with them every time they invited me to, I would have to go back to work. Just honestly, I would have to, and I don't want to go back to work. I would rather forego some of those invitations than go back to work just to be able to do that every day. Going out to eat every single day is not important to me. My time is what is important to me. So we have to eat within our means. That includes grocery shopping. That includes what we cook. That includes how often we eat out. And so if we are not eating within our means, that can totally throw off our end game of dreaming within our means and being able to live out those dreams in the future. Are we driving a car that is within our means? Um, and that not only includes what it costs and whether or not we have car payments, that includes the property taxes. If you live in a state where there are property taxes, that includes car insurance, you know, for the make and model that you've chosen. Uh, many times if we buy a car, even if we pay full price out of our savings, we will think, well, I have the money, so I'm living within my means. But if it depletes your savings, 
Are we really living within our means if we chose a car that depleted our savings? So that's the kind of things that I am challenging us to think about today. Are we vacationing within our means? And I ran across this a few years back. My husband and I had taken a trip to the Florida Keys and we had rented a condo. It was an older condo. It had people our age and older. It had very few cabins and little rooms available. We had our own private beach. It was extremely small. And I had so many negative comments about that, about it being a dump, how it was not fancy enough, how if I'm going to go on vacation, I'm going to have all the bells and whistles. Well, that would be something I would still be paying for today. And a few people said, I'd rather, you know, go into debt and have what I really want then have a vacation like that. We had a great vacation. We loved where we stayed. It was very comfortable for us. It was clean. It had everything that we needed. And we are not super fancy people. We live in the country in Kansas. So going there was a real treat for us and we really enjoyed it. Um, we only ate out once a day. We made our meals inside the place that we had rented. We had our own little mini kitchen. I planned it that way. So we need to think about that as well. Vacationing within our means. Do we want to be paying for that vacation in three years? Do we want to not take a vacation for three years just so we can have all of those bells and whistles? My husband and I would rather be able to vacation several times a year and do low cost vacations like camping or a weekend trip rather than putting all of our money and resources towards a one-time trip and that and just you know eating at the best restaurants doing all the things and then spending a ton of money that we're still going to be paying for or spend depleting our savings again like i mentioned about the car also miscellaneous subscriptions. And I hear this from other people, but I want to take this a step farther. Do we have like auto deliveries that we don't really think about until they show up at our door and we're like, oh yeah, I probably need to cancel that. Or I really didn't need it this month, but I'm still on that auto delivery shipment. Do we have like extra iCloud storage on our phones. I get tricked almost, almost by that sometimes. I will get a notice that says your iCloud storage is full. Do you want to, uh, you know, sign up for more storage? But then when I look at my phone storage, I have tons of phone storage. I don't know why it keeps telling me I have all this, that I need this iCloud storage because I don't need it. My phone on its own, on it by itself has tons of storage left. I do not pay for extra iCloud storage. I don't need it. And you will get those notifications that will make you think that you need it or that you are close to being full, but you're really not. I'm really not. So just those little things like that can really add up as a monthly charge and you just forget about them. Maybe you signed up for a free subscription for a month and then you forgot about it and then next thing you know you've been charged another couple months or you try to stop it and you're still being charged two or three more months before you can get it stopped that's been my experience that's why i don't sign up for those free months because then i end up paying for two or three more months because they're like oh you know you stopped it now but it doesn't end until here and so even though you're putting in to stop, you know, you're going to have to pay another month. So I don't, I don't do those anymore. I'm just too leery of getting stuck with another payment for another month or two that I don't have budgeted in. And I really don't need that bad. Also dressing within our means. Um, are we spending too much on clothes? Do we already have too many clothes? Uh, how many coats do we own? How many light jackets do we own? How many shoes do we own? Do we have more than we're really utilizing? And then we're continuing to pick other things up because they're cute or they're cheap or they'll match this, or we could use it for this event. 
Dressing within our means is another huge one like eating. We can get caught up in that and not really realize how much money we have spent on things that we probably didn't need. And then that doesn't even include like brands. I mean, if you're brand specific, um, you know, my grandson, I have to share these personal stories because they really get my thinking going. And that's where I come up with some of these videos. My grandson was telling me the other day that his girlfriend spent $270 on a pair of Michael Jordan shoes. And I was like, why would she do that? And he said, well, she, you know, she's worked really hard and she hadn't bought herself anything nice. And I said, a $30 pair of shoes wouldn't be nice. I mean, where do we see our levels of nice? Um, you know, $270, that's huge. That's more than our monthly budget for food. I apologize. My notes got over the, over the screen. Um, but seriously, what, what is nice? We need to examine that within ourselves because I think that standard just keeps raising. And I think sometimes we don't realize that maybe, you know, like to me, $270 for a pair of shoes is totally unrealistic. Getting a name brand like Michael Jordan to me is totally unrealistic. But for many people, that is a very reasonable option. So we have to explore that within ourselves and look at our budgets and look at our dreams. What is reasonable for us? What is going to hinder that dream? Like I said, if I did some of these things that my neighbors are doing, I would have to go back to work. Well, that would hinder my dream. I don't want to go back to work if I don't have to. I want to have that free time. So we really have to analyze that stuff within ourselves and look at our goals. And then the next one is how many services are we paying for? This is different than subscriptions. I'm talking about oil changes, car detailing, um, haircuts, coloring our hair, perming our hair, getting our nails done, getting pedicures, getting delivery of items like, you know, fast food, groceries, house cleaning, lawn care, the list could go on and on. And for some people, those things are really necessary. You know, if you are disabled and you're on a fixed income, maybe you can't mow your grass and you can't carry your groceries. So some of those things become necessary. But for someone like me, to me, that would be a luxury. I can still go to the store myself. I can still carry groceries. I do have a bad back, but even when I got down here to Texas to unload my car, I just took a small bag and I would unload my ice chest in small increments where I could carry it myself to put it away and then go get another bag full. So I've made allowances that will keep me from having to hire someone to deliver things for me because I can still make do. And those are the things that have helped me live out my low income dreams of being able to live in the South in the climate that I want and not spend extra money to do it and still be able to do it on a low income. And I've shared with you, our budget is $21,500 a year and we are comfortable. We're comfortable with that because I think about these different things. I try to do everything I can for myself. And if I can't do it for myself, I pr try to price shop to make sure that I, it's still affordable for me. And then I think looking at how often we leave our home, that's a big one. Uh, when I lived in the country, super easy, right? Don't leave your home unless you're going to work. Um, maybe shop once a week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks. Don't make a lot of trips because you know that was $10 in gas basically every time you left your home to get anywhere. Down here, I'm challenging myself because now I am close to grocery stores. I am close to everything. So I'm going to challenge myself, you know, if I can walk to the Dollar General that's like 0.2 of a mile, take a bag, get a couple things, come back, I'm not going to start my car. Um, I, I've been here uh, part of a week. I've been to the store one time to get two things. Um, I'm not going to go every week. I'm still going to try to keep up 
with that lifestyle, just because it's easy doesn't mean that I should be doing it for my budget. Because if I do that because it's easy and it's convenient and it's close by, I will end up messing up being able to dream and live within my means. And that's my total end goal. So I have to stay focused on that. I cannot get lured into, oh, it's only a 1.9 miles to the grocery store. So every time I think of something that sounds good or something I want, I'm just going to jog down there in the car. It'll be fine because that's going to wreck my budget. So these are the things that we have to think about when we leave home. Is it costing us gas? Is it costing us snack money? Is it costing us unnecessary purchases that we could get by without? And is that going to wreck our dreams that we are living within our means? Is that going to raise that standard of what we need to meet those expenses that we are just silently, easily adding on without really thinking about that? So Then that leads me to this, retiring within our means. Many of us have huge goals on retirement. We're thinking of a beach, we're thinking of an umbrella, a lawn chair, maybe a little drink with an umbrella in it. (laughs) I think a lot of us picture that when we're thinking about retirement. But for many people, retirement is living where they've been their whole lives. Uh, spending more time at home, spending more time cooking, spending more time with friends and family, maybe spending more time outdoors, doing more crafts and things that were their hobbies that they didn't have time for. They don't always look like that chair on a beach with an umbrella. So we have to think about what is realistic for us. What can we enjoy and what can we afford to even retire within our means? For me, that looked like moving to a 55 and over community, having a camper, so maybe I can choose a different location every year if I choose to, and still living frugally so that I don't have extra costs above what I've already planned for. If I stay within that plan, I can continue to do this until I can draw social security. If I get lured into some of those other bells and whistles, I'm going to have to go back to getting a part-time job. So I think this is such an important topic, even for you, if you are not retired yet, to think about what do your dreams look like? Are you living in each category of your budget within your means? And then are you dreaming within your means? Are you? Let me know. I, I come up with these little ideas and I like to share them with you and get your feedback. Um, I know some of them sometimes are totally different than you're going to hear anywhere else. And that's because I guess I'm a deep thinker and I get really interested in, in how people's minds work and how they think and how they plan and how they budget for stuff that they want in their life. And I like to present these things to see if any of my ideas could make other people's lives easier. So if this video has brought any value to you, please give me a thumbs up. I would love to see you in the next one. Thanks for listening today.